Hey everybody, welcome to the Elseworlds Exchange. I'm Sal. And I'm Joel. Happy post-Turkey Day to everybody who is in the uh, North American continent that is also within the borders of the United States, because yeah. that was that. was that. Was that. Uh, we had ours in October. You had yours in October on the scariest month of the year. Indeed. Uh, the Canadians overeat. Um, <laughs> that's that's how it goes here. We uh, Hopefully you had a, uh, you, you, what was it, box, Boxing Day? Uh, yeah, that's, you... uh, that's post- Post. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do you call your Thanksgiving again? I don't remember. Oh, we just call it Thanksgiving or oh, Canadian okay. oh, or, right. or Canadian Thanksgiving to help differentiate it from yours because sometimes wow. it is confusing. Yeah, you got to change the name. Don't make us change the name. Yeah, really. Um, well, uh, you had your, you had we we talked about yours I think on one of the shows, but it, did you have a nice one? Yeah, yeah, I did. A, I did a prime rib this year, and because uh, my mom actually ended up taking care of a bunch of the older ladies who live in the building with me, ended up making plates for them. And it's funny as I'm sitting there carving, I'm like, "Hey, how did I get talked into this making food for other people?" <laughs> All for me, usually. That's right. That's part. That's part of the spirit of Thanksgiving is to share and uh, in the community so. and make food for other people. We we certainly did the same at our place. And if you follow us on. Uh, Twitter uh, at Sal says what, or if in Instagram.com slash come pop official, you will see that we deep fried our turkey as we have mm. done for a long time. And uh, of course, we're safe and uh, we have our unitasker known as a uh, fire extinguisher handy mm, nice. adjacent to the experience. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good time. Good bird. Great family and friends. It was a, it was overall a terrific experience. I'm tired and I'm like just waking up from it. Like literally, yeah. like Joel woke me up to let me know that like it's Friday. I, and, I usually uh, write you the night before, but I'm like, ah, oh, it's Thanksgiving. I don't want to bother him. And then the day after, I'm like, well, he might just want to chill today too. Oh, I'll ask him anyway, just to make certain. Exactly. So today we're going to talk about um, getting the, the X Men into the MCU, and it's funny because I feel like I've made this title so many times, but not with me though. Right. <laughs> right. And I feel like we'll have opportunities to do this again. Oh, God. Yeah. Because I don't think the X-Men are going to be in the MCU within the next two years. No, they're so. really in no rush, which there's something honestly a little refreshing about that with Disney Marvel being like, no, we don't need another franchise yet. We got lots of other franchises. We're bringing stuff out of if we if we make a little less than a billion dollars next time, maybe we'll get to work on the X-Men. And also, hey, the last guys who had X-Men. Uh, they they kind of fucked it up a little bit, kind of muddied the <laughs> waters. Maybe we need people to forget about it and miss it again. How can we miss you, X Men, if you don't go away? Right. I know that uh, I was just thinking about the the Fox X Men franchise, and I was like, you know, that's like an interconnected bunch of universe. Like that's a universe mm -hmm. in and of itself of characters like, from all walks of life yep. with their own potential franchises all coming together. And then each time they made like an X Men movie, it was kind of a big deal. But one of the major distinguishers, I think, like between that and the MCU is that there was no like singular vision guiding the ship. And no. as such, the continuity was all over the place. The sure tones was. are all over the place. Oh, yeah. Like, th there's no consistency outside of certain actors and only the mm. ones that, you know, like Hugh Jackman. Yeah, it's only consistency was a lack of consistency. You're right. Yeah, like that was the main consistency of the Fox X-Men. It was like, you can be sure that they're going to fuck something up continuity wise by the next one. And I know that I'm sure some cynic is going to be like, well, that's the hallmark of the X-Men is that they're going to fuck up continuity. It's like, no, 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 no. They they remember it all. Like, that's why they're all so messed up is because they're like a family. They're like, yeah. no, no, no. Don't think I don't remember that time that you like either almost married or at least slept with one of my multiples, <laughs> you know, like there's a lot of drama and part of the fun is remembering it all and being oh, part yeah. of that family. But, uh, it also got quite desperate at the end there. Too. It's yeah. like, oh, God, we got to keep making these or, you know, they're going to take the rights back. We got to make one every year. Even if it makes no sense, even if we've introduced time travel and jumping ahead every couple of years. And even though we're going to burn through this cast and have to start over all again anyway. Oh my God. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what they do, but it also, I want to keep an ear to the ground for what to watch out for. Yeah. What, like what are some lessons to be learned? I mean, like it's not every day that you get to play with toys and get to see how some other kid messed up playing with those toys oh, yeah. for 20 years. So what are some lessons to be learned from the Fox X-Men that the MCU X-Men should absolutely not do? Joel, what totally. do you think? Any thoughts? Uh, well, well, actually, you know, uh, again, I have I have half a pitch here that we're going to script, Doctor. But on top of the pitch, I was also sure to put some mandates on myself. Excellent. All right. 
And, you know, one of the mandates is you can't amazing Spider-Man this. You can't do lateral moves. You got to do new shit that we haven't seen before in the Fox movies. So what you're suggesting is no Phoenix saga. No Phoenix. <laughs> Not right away. You got to You got to do a whole trilogy and prove you can't fuck it up. Maybe the next cycle of movies, you can make a big deal about Phoenix saga. Also too, keep it small is what I'm going to say for the first movie. Keep it to the original X-Men, Beast, Iceman, Gene, Cyclops, uh, Angel. Keep it very small. Keep it to five. I think we saw with Eternals. Yeah, big team movies are great and everything, but eventually if you got to introduce too many people, it becomes a bit of a slog and someone's going to get underserved. Also, too, and I kind of break this rule in my own thing is when we get into pitches, but make it an actual team movie because that was a problem all those other x-men movies had they were really about wolverine and then they were really about mystique is what they were <laughs> basically whoever was the most popular at the time and whose career was on the biggest upswing got an entire movie made about themselves to the detriment of everyone else x-men is a team book team stories tell a team movie we know you can right because people who love x-men they love them for their individual characters and they love their team aspect. And like part of the fun of being part of a fandom is the diversity of that fandom and the diversity of, in, of, of interests. And as a result, like you can have X-Men fans and they love Wolverine or Cyclops mm -hmm. or Jean or Maggot. Like there's there's any number of fandom out there. And the the the, the hard part of cultivating that fandom and working on that property is 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 paying not lip service, but rather uh, paying homage and giving everyone their due, giving the audience the character moments yeah. that they desire uh, for their favorite characters, or at the very least, giving them some equal time, some equal equal footing to to present themselves, so that like people can at least know who they are. Like, I don't think there are very many Cyclops fans, thanks <laughs> to the Fox X Men fan, like or X Men movies. Yeah. And that's too bad because I like James Marsden. Yeah, uh, yeah, I I, I feel like he was the butt of the jokes because to make Wolverine look cool. Oh, absolutely! He was the stick up his ass, kill joy, wet blanket. Yeah, and they kill him in the third one just to really hammer home how much he sucks. Right, kill him off screen practically, and we never really see him again. And and people just don't really seem to miss him. It's like that, but Cyclops is such an integral part of the of, of the family. He's, like how could he's, you? He's, he's the Captain America. He's the original son. Hell, I would argue they make it even worse in the next trilogy of films because they make Havoc the Cyclops stand-in by making him the older brother, not the younger brother. Yep. And then they kill them both. Off. Yeah, it's really weak. It's really Very. weak. Uh, by the way, we should also mention the show if you're interested in watching the show live is sponsored by you. If you want to help us out uh, and be on the show, you can ask a question in the Super Chats and we'll read it here on the program and uh, you'll be part of the show for posterity until the end of time. Um, but yeah, and if you want to help us out and you don't want to do that, don't worry about it. Particip participate in the chat because there's a lot of great conversation going on in there, uh, but also make sure to subscribe. If you are uh, here at youtube.com slash comic pop, make sure to subscribe because we're almost 100,000 subscribers. It'd be really cool to get there, but also mm -hmm. check out Comic Pop Returns where this kind of live show happens every week. Uh, so check us out there and make sure to subscribe and click those bells to get notified only because you'll get the push notification because YouTube is not going to tell you when these shows come out unless you tell them you want to be told. And the only way to do that is to have notifications turned on. So, uh, Joseph, I'm sorry, Josh Wallabaugh says, Villain, what makes you think you can defeat me? Will you send more heroes? Wanda, no, more yeah. mutants. <laughs> that works. <laughs> yeah, no. I, don't, I don't think they're going to go the House of M route. Not yet, anyway. Again, that's you do that six movies down the line. <laughs> right? Cam Bowen finally able to catch you guys live. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, yeah. Hope you ha guys had a great week. We did, man. How about yeah. you? Uh, Cowboy, uh, hello, Joel and Sal. Hope all is well. Hello, Thank you, Cowboy. Uh, hopefully, you are doing well as well. Super Luigiac, shout out to Joel because why not? Oh, agreed. Why not? Uh, Rescue nine one one zero. Days Future Past, Dark Phoenix, and Apocalypse should be each should each be a trilogy. I don't get why Fox is in such a hurry to burn up all their top resources. It's true. If you I think do that... X-Men right, it can be a well you keep going back to four years. Like, you think Avengers is going to keep paying your bills. No, X-Men can keep paying your bills if you do it right. Right. I was watching uh, the, the first episode of Hawkeye the other day. And uh, what was it? There was a sequence where they kind of come back to the Avengers fight. Yes. And I was like, and I like it because I love that movie. And I also love, like, that 
kind of like interconnectivity of the universe. Super cool just to see it restaged. It's like, oh yeah, we haven't really restaged this. I guess since the since Doctor Endgame. Strange stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but to see it restaged on TV, you expect to see it restaged in a movie. That's fair. That's fair. But it was fun to see. But I was like, man, they they can mine the, the the just the Battle of New York. Like we're seeing an alternate ver- view of Battle of New York, and I'm like, mm-hmm. this is they could have done half of this in the Netflix shows. I know, right? That's what I thought of. Like this, this is what we all kept waiting for in Luke Cage and Daredevil and everything, isn't? It? And here's Hawkeye giving it to you in the first five minutes. First five minutes. Now, it, I will say the other thing: the thing that was that broke my heart the most about the Netflix shows and their lack of connectivity. Hulk destroys Harlem. Harlem, and it's we have a show never, yeah. set in Harlem, and I don't know if you're familiar, but like. Harlem is a city of tradition. Yeah. Or not a city, but like a borough, a, mm-hmm. a, a, a street of tradition and history. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there would have been some kind of memorial. It should have been a of, thing and it wasn't a thing. Yeah, there's like undercurrent of tension around heroes. Like it would have been really cool if they were like, F you, Luke Cage. The, another big strong guy came through here and wrecked it yeah uh, also too you know you figure with the social commentary too it's like, again yeah, no one cares what happens to harlem i wonder why exactly that went really cool and it's really weird they didn't do anything with it missed uh, opportunity elizabeth russell you got hope you guys are hey guys hope you're well i am caught up on hellions and i was wondering yeah. if you could recommend any X, any mex men titles that were similar to it um uh, yeah rosenberg's uh x-men from like the last run before Hickman was also a weird dark comedy with messed up characters. And Havoc was on that team too. Yeah. I guess, uh, what was that? That X-Force book with, uh, with, with Archangel and Deadpool and, uh, Oh yeah. 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 Where they all had blades. Yes. That was, that. that's one I would check out. Um, the milkman. Uh, I think the X-Men can work in, is if they came from a different dimension in the multiverse, don't have to be from Fox, no more secret society stuff. Mm. Um, so I've heard the theory a lot that like the multiverse is going to be the, the catalyst. Right. Um, I'll be honest. When I was watching Eternals, I thought they were talking about energy and spikes mm-hmm. and, 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 and what was going to happen with like the baby Etern- with the baby celestial. And I'm like, is this where they're going to do it? Are they going to do like the energy and make everyone mutants here? Are they doing a Jason Aaron pastiche where it's like, well, yes, obviously earth is a fertile ground for those with superpowers and mutations because literal gods live in the earth's core. Exactly. They didn't do that, but, uh, but not yet like, anyway. Yeah. But I'm like, Oh, there, here we go. And I think that like, they're aware of all the theories out there. So um, they'll probably try to subvert your expectations. Uh, young Goku over 9,000. I'd love to dive back into X-Men, but we have fantastic four to introduce. No need to rush. X-Men is its own super franchise within Marvel team movie. Definitely. I it's, agree. It's very that. true. And also endless spinoff potential, like yes. so much like you could have X-Men movies. You could have a Wolverine weapon X franchise and cross them over later. In fact, when I was writing my own pitch that we're going to talk about later, that's what I wrote as it's like, now Wolverine is its own thing. We work up to the Wolverine X Men crossover, even when they <laughs> eventually meet. Hey, uh, the school man, endless possibility for just the school. That's the Disney Plus show right there, X Men yeah. Academy. <laughs> yeah, X Men Academy is a show. That's all you need. And th- yeah, like you said, th- this could be its own practical universe. And not that it, we're talking multiverses and reality. So I'm not talking about that specifically. I'm saying mm-hmm. an X Men family of movies and franchises that are irrespective. Uh, I was watching TikTok and Moose mentioned that um he thinks that the x-men work best when they are as far removed from the marvel universe as possible so like mcu connections should be really tenuous at best um and i don't necessarily agree wholeheartedly but i do agree that like the x-men should feel like its own thing over here and then when you remember that they're connected it's like a really it's fun a big deal it's like a big surprise and a, and a really big deal I mean, when Wolverine eventually joins whatever new incarnation of the Avengers that they have, that's got to be a big special moment because everyone's wanted to see it. I'm telling you, man. See, when we're talking about pitches, I think that you could have your cake and eat it, too, when it comes to uh, exploitation of franchise, crossover, and um, fan service without even touching the X-Men. Yeah, like true. I think you could just introduce Wolverine. Like before you even have an X-Men plan, 
you could do a Wolverine movie. I mean, they did just introduce Spider-Man, didn't they, in Civil War? He just and everyone shows was super the hell down with up. It. Yeah, and no one was like, what? Everyone was excited. I'm not necessarily saying that Wolverine should show up in an Avengers movie, but I do think that if you were to shoehorn Wolverine into an upcoming team movie or some kind of big event, mm. that would be the way to introduce, like, okay, mutants are here, and they've been here because Wolverine is old. Time. Like, Wolverine is old. Hell, Wolverine never joined the X-Men. Wolverine's just been operating as Wolverine for this long. Then right. you could, And you could do your, your Chris Evans stuff by being like, okay, Wolverine fought in World War II. Here's a scene with Captain America and Wolverine. Like, you could do the shot from that Jim Lee cover of Cap, Wolverine, and Black Widow. Like, Which is a great cover. In, in a flashback. <laughs> Actually, hey, speaking of that cover of them all standing together, Wolverine, Captain America, Black Widow, that was Uncanny X-Men 268, right? I assume. Okay, so I, in that I don't Hawk, the numbers. So in the Hawkeye show, The Watch, they're like Avengers Manor, you know, number 268. Yes, it was 268, by the way. So isn't that funny that they put 268 there, yeah. that, that specific number in the Hawkeye show? Right? Well, Hawkeye, it's interesting what Marvel is doing with... um respect to introducing characters and kind of going going further than i would have expected like there's a lot less reservation Indeed. than they had you know where it's like i think civil war kind of blew the lid off of it where Absolutely. the russos went we want spider-man and they're like uh we've been literally like the mcu is predicated on the fact we don't have him <laughs> yeah like, pretty much literally the Gotta mcu exists because it. we don't have spider-man so and, and you just want to put him in the movie like you want to bridge a gap between <laughs> arguably a dying studio and a fledgling expanding studio. Like that's what you want to do. And they're like, yes, we're the Russos. What we do, baby. Right. Like we came from community We're we're, we dare. <laughs> yeah, we do dare. Uh, and, and, and then they did it. And then they put in black Panther. Cause they were like, well, what if the Spider-Man thing doesn't work out? We'll introduce black, black Panther and Spider-Man get two franchises out of it. Yeah. And by then they went, I guess we could just put everybody in these books. Like, I guess we could just do everything. And also still make a pretty damn good movie on top of that, too. Yes. Yeah, somehow Civil War manages to have these like fan moments like Tony Stark and Peter Parker's apartment and not make it feel like it was like, what the fuck is this doing in here? Like, this yeah. is really tacked on. Um, you hear that a lot about MCU movies nowadays where it's like, oh, that was really tacked on. Um, and in a Spider-Man movie that's coming out where, oh, like Godzilla's going to be in it. The Iron Giant's going to appear. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, that's going to be the real litmus test the for ghost like, of Tupac. Yeah. What's, t what's tacked on. Um, but yeah, I, I think Wolverine, I think start with Wolverine because look, you want him in there anyway. And if you want to have your first class or your original team, mm -hmm. wait, but don't like X-Men's over there. Wolverine's over here as he always has been. Yeah, and it's a good way, too, to where it's like, yeah, this is a period piece. We don't have to explain how any of the mutant stuff connects or makes sense yet. Because like you said, Wolverine is old. We're just doing Wolverine origins in a movie form. Because that's a cool story, right? Yeah. No. Uh, well, it depends on which Wolverine origin you're talking about. The movie? No. No, the, no. Uh, <laughs> the, now, the comic. <laughs> hell, here's a, here's a Wolverine movie pitch for you. Uh, when you get the Hulk universal rights back... <sighs> That's when you introduce Wolverine. Yes. Oh my in your God. Hulk movie. Damn, that is so good. As as he was originally intended. Hey, here's Wolverine. Never. He's the antagonist of the next Hulk movie. Wait, what? Yeah, because that's how it was. And yeah. here's you know freaking uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, just just Windsor it up. <laughs> yep. Just Windsor it up. Hell. Oh my God. You go with Wol Wolverine shows up. He's the antagonist in the Hulk movie. Hulk is it, it's it's post She Hulk. Uh, Banner is you know in the back seat. Uh, Savage Hulk has has emerged. Living he's, in the wilderness, he's, he's tearing up the wilderness. You can introduce Wendigo. Oh my! You can introduce God. Wolverine. You could introduce because Wolverine is working for Department X or whatever, like he was, whatever they've retconned he was working for during Hulk the, Gate One Eighty One. The the, the Doctor Cornelius guys. We'll put them in there because we didn't do Doctor Cornelius in any of the other Dude, movies. You could do Doctor Cornelius. You know who else could show up in your Hulk movie if you're going to introduce that aspect? Friggin' Deadpool. Yeah, you really could. Or you got to at least put a reference in, if nothing else. You could put a little Deadpool in there. Uh, and... Department K is really breathing down our neck. These Department K, I thought that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, right? That's that's all you need. Uh, but 
that way you're just like, oh. And it does it in a Marvel way where it's like, I know Hulk. I know the universe. I know the like history and the baggage that is associated with him. Now Wolverine. Now mutants. And the history. And then you could you could have a history of, we don't even make Wolverine movies. Wolverine just shows up in other people's movies. He's the ultimate freelancer. He's yeah, the he's ultimate free agent. <laughs> right? So when he does inevitably show up in an X-Men movie, which we will build on uh, down the line, it doesn't feel like, what? Wolverine? It's more like, well, yeah, Wolverine's going to show up in this. Or, uh, knowing Feige and those people, uh, he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> but but we have that carry at the end of the stick. But you want to see it right. Because he might, though. You know you will. Like, especially when you do introduce the X-Men and Cyclops. And you build up Cyclops. Absolutely. And so you have the leader of the X-Men. And you love him. And he is, like to a lot of people kind of a stick in the mud, but because you've like, ca you cast a charismatic actor mm -hmm. and you've given him his due and there is no Wolverine around to push him around. He's Cyclops. And everyone's now you just have like, instant drama. Now you got a picture. Well, that you've got a picture because you've got, you got Cyclops in your movie, in your X-Men movie and you're building Wolverine over there, Cyclops and the X-Men over here. So you're like, Oh my God. You're, it's like when you see X when you saw the Avengers movie and you're like, I can't wait to see Tony Stark interact with like Thor. Yeah, a guy with a god complex next to an actual Norse god. Right, and it was satisfying. I mm. can't wait to see Tony Stark interact with Bruce Banner. In this, it's like I can't wait to see Cyclops and Wolverine meet, and it's going to be huge. Yeah, that's and you can build the that. Idea I had with my pitch because right, yeah, because no joke for for my thing there. I wanted Cyclops to be the POV character. It's oh. a team. It's a team movie, but I kind of cheated because I think you know Cyclops was so underserved in all those other movies. He's a great fertile character to kind of build new ground with, and you know, actually build it on stone instead of shifting sands. Yes, absolutely. And uh, the way I want to start it, because again, you know, we got to show cool shit that none yep. of the other movies and none of the other X Men stuff touch. I want to open with the Summer's plane crash. I want uh -huh. that to be our big action scene that gets us in. It's all kind of mysterious because, you know, Scott, he's a kid. He doesn't remember what happened. He hits his head after. It's something that every X Men fan knows, every X Men fan loves. And it's a great way to set up this character because, you know, he, he has to save his brother, Alex, right? You know, that's the big thing hits the ground, hits his head, loses control of his powers. When he wakes up, he's separated from Alex, and that's going to be his thrust for the movie going forward. I need to find my brother. It's because, Bucky. <laughs> yeah, it's his Bucky. I need to find my brother. And also, because as we said before, X-Men is this teen drama. It's a story about, you know, found family and found community and everything. And I think that needs to be Cyclops's character journey like because by, by the end he doesn't find Alex but he finds a home anyway right may I play with that because it's like sure. you know he wants to find his brother and, and you could do a cut where it's years later and he's in the X-Men and he's with Professor Xavier that's mm. his new father figure yeah all this stuff and like you don't even really see that like longing for his brother but there's a sequence where you know he's just he's he's superficially moved on yeah because the audience doesn't know who Alex really is. It doesn't care. Like, they're no. not interested in watching another Winter Soldier dragged out over 10 years. Of course. But you have that undercurrent there because you have Xavier say something like, like, I know that you really want to find your brother. And, like, I promise you we're doing everything we can. Like, you know, something that alludes to, I know what you're thinking, you know, because I'm psychic and stuff. Absolutely. Uh, but, like, allows for Cyclops to have the freedom to, like, pursue romances, lead teams, do his yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just thinking off the top of my head now where, you know, I said father figure for Xavier, but like his literal father is Corsair. The fact that you could do a Star Jammers movie without missing oh, yeah. a beat. You could do a oh, Star yeah. Jammers movie first. You oh, don't even absolutely. need to uh, introduce the X-Men. You could just do a Star Jammers movie. I don't think there's any mutants on the Star Jammers. No, all aliens. So, and Corsair's a human. <laughs> There is. So, you know, you could introduce the Star Jammers as like a kind of alternate to because Gunn's leaving after Guardians 3. Yeah. And so you need a new high flying swashbuckling space team. Yeah. If if they were smart, they'd be like, Gunn, can you like, you know, while you're developing three, could you introduce the Star Jammers? Please. Right? Like please, as a kind please. of like we're just gonna transition from 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 you to them. Uh especially since like Drax is leaving, they're probably gonna kill at least one other person. Um you know, 
anyway, but yeah, Star Jammers. And I loved I loved the introduction in the X-Men animated series of X Factor. Yeah. Where they just show up mm-hmm. and Cyclops and Havoc don't recognize each other. Yeah, because the moment. last time they saw each other was che- was when they were children. Um you could you could have that be like, no, there is an X Factor somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah, that that's a way out of it. Another thing I kind of fell into, it's like, ah, well, shit, but you know, it's uh, Xavier has a cerebro, so he would look and I think maybe, you know, like our bittersweet ending. Oh, yeah. Our bittersweet ending of the movie is, you know, Xavier, because this is early on in their career. He he gets cerebro looking uh, for Alex. He's like, I, I, I couldn't find him, Scott. I'm sorry. I mean, that. Right either means he's dead or his mutant powers haven't manifested well, yet. Or he doesn't have a mutant or he's not a mutant or he's not a mutant yet. You know, we'll, we'll keep looking, but you know, I'm, I'm sorry. And you know, and that's Scott's kind of moment of like, okay, well, you know, let now, me move on. Yeah. Let me move on now. Now I know I tried to, I, I have my found family in the X-Men. We've built a home together here. I also, uh, b- because all the other movies, like in that last run, we're like, oh, well, we got to build up to Mr. Sinister because he's the last villain we had. Yeah. I'm not going to do that, but I do want some scenes of Scott in the orphanage. Uh, I, I think in the original, it was called like the state home for foundlings or something yep. in Omaha, Nebraska. Maybe we'll call it like the state home for boys. We yeah. won't call it the Essex Institute. We won't be dropping anything to that just yet. But I want to have some scenes in the orphanage because I want young scott who maybe he's 16 in this because again the x-men were really young when they're they started him there's yeah. nothing that says they don't have to be young in this too because it's a franchise we'll grow with them we'll build with it yeah see that's the thing i i think that marvel started to care about around spider-man and then stopped after multiverse where they were like oh i guess it doesn't really matter you know like yeah i'm concerned that the x-men are going to be too old by the time we start Absolutely. You know, like so, that they're going to cast anyone they want for Fantastic Four and be like, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not going to go Ultimate Fantastic Four. We're just going to cast whoever, you know. So so that's my mandate. Try and keep it nice and young. Also, too, if you have Scott in the orphanage, you can have him be bullied by fun cameos like the Nasty Boys, oh Ruckus, Slab, Gorgeous George, <laughs> Hairbag and Multiple Man, who because it's a team thing, I'm like, OK, we got to set them up now. So they can be weird henchmen of the real villain later on in the movie, because, you know, obviously we need, you know, bad guys for the fight. Nasty boys work for Sinister. Maybe that's the post credit. Ruckus gets a call from like his real benefactor and being like, what happened? Right. No, that'd be great. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, sir. I love the idea, especially of cause what, what you're building towards, which was, of course, that uh, Professor X knows where Alex is and he's just keeping it to himself. That's a thing, too. See, I want to play with that idea that the other movies never really did. And that is Professor X is kind of an asshole. <laughs> the last like four X-Men movies were like everyone treats Professor X like an asshole. They're like, yeah. you asshole. And it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But he's but, sweet old Patrick Stewart. Right, but he needs to be sympathetic. I don't know. They, I could imagine you really... I mean, they already did it with the Fox franchise where they were like, you trust him. And then they pull the rug out from under you later. Yeah. Um, I would also say, too, that you know these, uh, th- these whole movies take place during 2008 is when the movie begins. That's when the plane crashes because it's our kind of way. Got him. To, to, to do it, you know, like uh, parallel to what's happening in Iron Man and the rest of the universe. And yes. honestly, my, my pitch for Professor X in these movies is make him like a weird fringe academic. He's like doing the early <laughs> podcast circuit and everything. Yeah. They they don't think he's a crackpot, but they certainly don't believe all his far out ideas about <laughs> mutation and the atom and everything else there. And he, he he's talking about like, oh, and I'm going to start a, you know, a special place for mutants, people like us. Maybe, maybe not a school. Maybe he hasn't quite settled on that yet, but I want to build, you know, community amongst mutant kind and like a young Cyclops hears this and figures, oh, well, you know, I'm getting all these weird weird headaches and stuff and all these weird fires are starting maybe maybe i am a mutant maybe i should try and look this professor x guy up maybe he can help me find my brother i'd love to see that and cut to the chase by having professor x be like sounds like a good idea in his head you know like yeah oh Cyclops wants really to go good. on this journey and professor x is like 
I've been kind of kicking you towards this journey my entire time. Okay, you just fixed a huge problem with my pitch here because I'm like, okay, but if he's in Omaha, Nebraska, how the hell How's he going to get to Westchester? How does he get to Westchester exactly? Does Xavier come to look him up? No, that doesn't make sense. No, I want this to be a movie as much about Cyclops deciding to be Cyclops and, you know, Mm. take that character journey, but also... I kind of want it to be a character journey for Xavier too, where it's like, oh, I have to be the guy this kid thought I was. I have to, you know, be the clean cut, respectable professor, not this weird, like Duncan Trussell podcaster (laughs) weirdo with far out ideas. Right. Because he's going to be, I know his mind. He's going to be disappointed. (laughs) He's he's not going to listen to me. So I have to like create the, prof- I'm not just Xavier anymore. I have to create Professor, Professor X myself. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Ketch says, thanks for another year of back issues. I listen to Amazon's attack at least once a week. Also, <laughs> Rogue, the villain in the next Captain Marvel movie. Love that idea. Historical precedent for it. I know a lot of people have been pitching that idea. Right. Cat Lawyer uh, will defend for treats. I just <laughs> want a short, hairy, kind of gross Wolverine. I don't, don't want a we gross all? Wolverine, but I do want a... I love a shorter Wolverine. I want a Wolverine that like seems a little scarier. Absolutely. Uh, Dan V900, James Marsden did get screwed in doing Superman Returns, mm. led to that early X3 off-screen mm. death. Film needs to have like six or seven heroes max to start. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Thanura Ravindra says, do not milk on Charles Magneto Wolverine mm. in the MCU, although you could bring back past actors via multiverse to avoid the problem of rebooting Holocaust Survivor Magneto in the 2020s. Yeah. I feel like Ian McKellen is just too damn old. Like He is. You could... I. There's no good MCU explanation for having him be a Holocaust Survivor. I mean, we'll get there later. I'll maybe steal an idea from X-Men Evolution. That is, no, see, I stole a Crimson Gem of Cytorak, which I use every so often, like every 50 years, to age myself down again. Ah. Uh, Cosmic Reader, still find it weird that Marvel Studios decided to revive a cartoon first before putting X-Men continuity. It's interesting, isn't it? That's what inspired me to like maybe do this pitch because it's yes. like, yeah, maybe we'll learn what Disney Marvel want to do by watching the new cartoon, which is I'm telling you, man, I, I, I think the cartoon, the reason why X-Men 97 is going to be a thing is because Disney Plus was... Uh, and an experiment, but also the plan, like Disney's plan, which was to destroy Netflix. And <laughs> uh, which for the life of me, I don't understand why. Uh, it'd be like wanting to destroy a warehouse that distributes content. But like, <laughs> uh, I understand that like for them, they have like, you know, now it's closed end to end metrics. Like you, you'll never know how a show does except by seeing on Disney plus that like, a show didn't work out. Yeah. There is no revival for the Christopher Daniel Barnes Spider-Man show, Aww. which suggests to me that fewer people watched that than watched the X-Men and series. X-Men, and yeah. the other thing is the, I, th- I think that people who work at Marvel studios also like, like it. Yeah. I mean, how could you not? It's arguably the second greatest superhero cartoon of all time. And when the first one is Batman, that ain't half bad. So yeah, I'm thinking that, X-Men, the animated series, was the gateway for most people into the X-Men at all. Mm. And Marvel's like, you can't really... like It costs a lot to buy or manufacture that level of connectivity and yeah. nostalgia. True. And so if we can get away with making another show that like re-energizes the aging fan base that brought into this mm-hmm. by getting like... 30 somethings and their children with this cartoon it, show. Yeah. That'll be the gateway. It, right? it helps too that the last couple seasons were bad when they moved animation to the Philippines. So they'll <laughs> love it even more if we say those last couple weren't canon and just go from there. Exactly. Uh, Dan, back to say the X Men never quite worked for me with the other Marvel characters other than Spider Man because of the bigotry compared to the Avengers and Fantastic Four. It's tougher. It depends on what you're reading. And, you know, they're not all great. Like the fact is, they're. Not every uh, X-Men into the Marvel Universe story is very good, uh, Mm. and it's tough to use. Absolutely. Uh, So, Kelly Frederick says, you guys think a Star Chambers movie, MC movie could work? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're going to want a Guardians replacement, like you said. We can't leave space. And listen, I I pitched the the, the Star Chambers movie as a, like, you should make that after Guardians. 
I don't really have a favorite Star Jammer story. <laughs> no, me either. They're like, just a cool concept. They're a cool concept. They're space fair. They're, it's 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 Firefly in space. That's enough for me. Like if you just go like we're making Star Jammers. Here's the characters. Here's their character bios. Make Firefly with these characters. Yeah, that's all you need. And hey, Disney Plus since Disney's all in on that, maybe Star Jammers could be a show. Yeah. Uh, Ethan Ainsworth been a been a bit since I've been able to donate. Thanks for a great six years, Sal. Uh, you weren't oh. sure what happened at the end of What If? In case no one else said, uh, Nat went to episode three where the Avengers died. Oh, that's sad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I I'm not sure about that, but I but I uh, I'm willing to uh, willing to give you that one. Uh, Rescue nine one one zero until they bring X Men Wolverine. Uh, can they just be another shot at the super soldier serum? His memories are gone, so Sam and Bucky can find him, and he doesn't know he's a mutant and thinks it's a serum. It's you an could option. do it, it. That's a that's like an ultimate origins kind of Wolverine. Yeah. I I want a Wolverine who's already established because no one's gonna want to watch a Wolverine who like doesn't know who he like. The amnesiac Wolverine bit gets old after a while. It certainly does. Uh, MNNM says, which suits do you want them to introduce them with? The OG yellow suits, the Claremont era individual designs, or an amalgamation of everything? I I don't know. Joel, think, did you have I, a pitch for this? I, I really didn't, but the more I think about it, because again, I want to go back to the original five and build from there, because again, yeah. don't burn through it like Fox did. I'm thinking, yeah, you start with the mm -hmm. most original suits, their uniforms, and then as the series evolves, everyone gets more individualized suits. Well, especially when people start leaving or... Yeah, yeah. Or or, or team, joining different teams. Yeah, absolutely. I like also, the idea of that. It, yeah, It's good for merch, too, because it's like, yeah, remember when Cyclops got his first, like, original costume? It's like when Nightwing got his first original costume. You want that very... You want that figure. That's true. I mean, look at look at the, uh, the Eternals figures that are going to yeah. be significantly discounted on the shelves. Uh, <laughs> they all have costumes. They do. <laughs> and uh, and they all have figures, and they're not especially exciting costumes, but they still have them, damn it, and you can buy their figure. Sure do. Uh, uh, so, yeah, you, you fixed a huge problem with my pitch here, and that is that uh, Xavier nudges Scott along to come yes. meet him in right. Westchester. And I'm thinking my idea, too, is like, the school is only half built. My thing is, because we're not going to have Magneto in this. We're not going to blow our Magneto wad right away. Good. Xavier will mention, oh, I had a partner, I had a benefactor, but we had a falling out over what we thought the school should be. He wanted to train soldiers, I wanted to train students, and well, yep. we had a falling out at that point. And again, we, we make reference to him again. We, we maybe won't do Magneto for like three movies. Exactly. No, I love the idea of hiding Magneto. Um, may I pitch a villain for the MCU X-Men that starts off? Absolutely. I, I had one too, but let's hear what you okay. got to say first. The Hellfire Club. Okay, again, because again, because they did the Hellfire Club already. I know it was kind of like a different version of it, but still, no, no, no. like the Hellfire Club being a kind of skulls, um, elite one percenter kind mm. of group that exists to be like it. It, it would mirror because the MC loves to take like, what if the hero were had a villain that was just like the hero? Sure, the Hellfire Club is another school, but it's not. Uh... But it's a hedonistic sex club for mutants who we often recruit amazing people we have always known that mutants exist because i think that's the tack i want to take with this yeah. where it's it's like vampires in blade yes. there's always been an underground society of mutants they just never had a name for themselves they never yes. had a community again if scott has to go from omaha to upstate new york he he should catch a train like he did in the comics he should ride the rails and see that there is this like fringe society absolutely because let me tell you something like when they make the blade movie Mm -hmm. they're not going to say that like the Thanos snap created vampires. No. Yeah. They're not going to say that Scott Lang's van exploded and created a portal <laughs> and vampires poured out of it. <laughs> they're going to say the vampires always existed. And we just didn't notice because vampires are like hedonistic douche nozzles. <laughs> and because people have been so obsessed with Iron Man and everything else. In fact, I think that's your way out of it for the mutants too. Yes. Where like Scott asked professor X, well, why, why the hell doesn't the world know? Why haven't you announced yourself? You have the powers of a God and, you have him sitting there and he's all haggard and everything maybe he's pouring a drink and he's like you just you just don't understand scott the world the world isn't ready yet for us and then maybe you see a thing on the tv of like oh an iron man went to a fictional middle eastern nation yeah. and blew up all those tanks yep. and scott's like but maybe it's time they're ready <laughs> right exactly or like 
maybe it doesn't matter if it's time or not. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Um, but yeah, I wanted like the Hellfire Club to be kind of like a mirror evil Professor X school where it's like Professor X is trying to build the school and he's like, yeah, this, this is working out. And then like you find out about the Hellfire Club, but not like that. Yeah. It also means you get to have Sebastian Shaw and Emma and like all those other very fun characters. They're very fun characters. You can keep them around. You can introduce Emma early. Maybe yeah. Scott's like, oh, hello. Yeah. Uh, but also you don't like do apocalypse in the first movie like you exactly. do characters where it's like sebastian shaw you could throw him away <laughs> see, see that's fun because then it becomes almost like a frat movie like damn you hellfire house yeah. <laughs> now and, and this is hard to do this is just logistically speaking this would be hard to do but but is there a way that you could do, you know how like we like to see the avengers at battle at the you know different angles oh yeah of course is there a way for us to do the Hellfire Club movie where the X-Men are fighting the Hellfire Club, but Wolverine's fighting the Hellfire Club from down here, and they just miss each other. Oh, that's <laughs> fun. Oh, I you definitely could, because Sebastian Shaw has a big house with a lot of secret passages. Exactly. Plus, you get those fun, like, uh, you know, those shy guys that they fight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to get the henchmen in. If you do Hellfire Club, you got to do the comic accurate henchmen. Yeah. Uh, Tevi wants to know how we're going to add Laura and X twenty, uh, Laura and Gabby. I wouldn't. Next phase. That's a next. That's X Men: The Next Generation. Yeah, that's the Hawkeye show equivalent of the Wolverine show. We'll get uh, there. Assume everything you like. We'll get to eventually. Exactly. Thanura Ravindra uh, put the Star Jammers and Cyclops plus Havoc's dad. Mm. Um, yeah, that's the plan, man. Um, Ethan Ainsworth, Joel Sal isn't drinking Diet Coke. Maybe an LMD. <laughs> I I'm drinking Coke Zero, which I always do. I never drink Diet Coke. Uh, and player six nine three M R O R. Okay. Uh, anyone else sick of the idea that mutants need some explanation as to where they've been in the MCU? Yes. The, the answer yes, is, love you both. Keep up the good work. Thank the, you. The answer is they probably won't because just like Eternals, it's like yeah, they were there, but they were living in secret. Right. Eternals. People are like mad that they were like, how come they didn't get involved? I'm like, have you ever been a person? Yeah. Have you ever seen a thing that's too big for you to involve yourself in or 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 something that you could easily help but didn't do anything about? Like yeah. it's it's almost like that's a thrust of the movie, them constantly <laughs> bickering about all the things they should have gotten involved in but didn't. And it's almost like that's the thing that breaks them up in the movie. Yeah, it's almost like that's actually what the movie's about. Yeah. Jam call X, they can say that X genes come from celestial seeds, mutations happening very slowly, trickle by the beginning of the atomic age until the snap blip emergence. Yeah, they could do all that, or they could not bother. Because yeah. one thing I'm very not interested in is hearing about where mutants come from. Uh, yeah. It was one of the most disappointing things about Ultimate Origins. It's one of the most disappointing things about, like, any X-Men story is, like, it's where true. do they come from? Though? I'm like, they... It's so true. It's I, like, I love mutants, but I hate the explanation every time. I don't want to know. Uh, it's, it's better when you don't. Stan Lee had it right. They were fucking born that way. Yeah. What? I'm trying to... I'm moving on. I made them. They're born with it. I... I'm sick of coming up with radioactive bullshit. Yeah, and rays, they were born the way. Now, now, I like your Hellfire Club pitch, but again, yeah. my thing is like, maybe they're too big for the first one. Maybe the sequel we do Hellfire Club. I'm yeah, thinking, yeah. again, because we got a Marvel movie method, this, you don't get AAA villains right away. No. I'm thinking for the first movie, they actually end up fighting Nanny and Orphan Maker <laughs> because they're weird and unlike anything else we've seen. Yes. And they're not like such a massive threat that you could believe a bunch of teenage X-Men on their first mission could beat them. And it also ties into that, you know, found family thing. Cause obviously Nanny's plot is right. she's going around kidnapping X and she kidnaps the nasty boys and puts right. them in tubes and indoctrinates them. And so it's like this whole kind of thing of like Scott and Xavier, you're going, you know, there has to be a better way for our people for mutants than like shitty orphanages and shitty nannies and everything. We have to build a better way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you don't want to do like you don't want to go too big and you don't want to retread. You got to do something totally off the wall and different. I thought you were going to suggest something. Juggernaut, but I love that idea of Nanny Norfolk Maker. I, again, Juggernaut was in Deadpool. I got to do something people have never seen before. And he was in that X-Men 3 movie too. He, he was, was in, in two different movies, two different Juggernauts. It, and... It's so hard because when I look at all the X-Men threats, I'm like, can't do Apocalypse, can't do Sublime, can't do... Uh, who's who's Xavier's sister who like... Oh, was Cassandra in... Nova? Yeah, can't do Cassandra Nova. That's no. too many, though. I think we should do Cassandra Nova at some point because it's never been done. Yeah, you could do Bad 
Sebastian, but like, who cares? That's just William Stryker again from the movies. Exactly. Um, I, gag. I don't want to do evil robots. I can't do Sentinels right no. away. I would like to see Sentinels, though. Like, oh, we'll get Sentinels. to Sentinels. But, uh, but, and by the way, apropos of my side project Wolverine movie that's running alongside mm. this or maybe before all this. Absolutely. First, it was because you got Wolverine in your X Men or in your Hulk movie. Yeah. Eventually, you're going to do a Wolverine movie. Can we please? put omega red in this movie oh, oh naturally <laughs> that's wolverine 2 wolverine 2 from russia with hate it's yes. got to be him versus omega red because i think omega red is so cool looking and there sure is the comic books are so afraid to use him i don't know if you've ever if you noticed recently yeah, like that? every time he's in a he's every time like they've used him no fewer than two different covers this year Sure and he's on like two pages. That's the funny thing. In the new X-Men book, he's like a weird triple agent with the vampires getting punked out by every side in this mutants versus vampires war. Or like, what? What? No. <laughs> he, he is this endless butt monkey. And also like his whole thing, like, oh, I need to eat. Well, I guess I don't need to eat anymore because the vampires fix that. All right. right. Okay, thanks. Uh, LJR 16. I think a good team for the first movie will be Cyclops, Gene, Iceman, Beast. Not blue. Nightcrawler and Piketty Pride, good balance. I like that idea of of merging the like the Cockrum and the and the Kirby. You might have to do that because also you don't want Gene to be the only woman on the team because that's no. you're gonna get think pieces written about you then. And you can't <laughs> have that. Well, you it also you get the fun of because I remember um, one of the approaches of Giant Size X Men was like let's diversify the team. As let's it get a bunch be. of different people from different backgrounds, and it's like that's what X Men is. But also like that's what the world is now. Sure so, is. so you get the marching orders from Giant Size with the with the history of X Men. Um, though I will say, just like as a little bit of meta commentary, I'm concerned that Marvel is just kind of like the fact that Marvel's making an X Men animated series sequel. The fact the X Men animated sequel was so or the effect that the X Men animated series was so successful. Mm. I'm wondering, are they just going to do that? That's what I think. I don't think they should. I think you should build up to those characters eventually. Again, keep it, keep it small. Don't right, like, I don't think Gambit out. should be in the Phoenix Saga. Like, <laughs> oh come on, all shells, me. Gambit. I mean, I love Gambit. And Same. Like, it'd be cool to see, not as not with Channing freaking Tatum in yeah, a Channing, solo movie. Yeah, Channing Tatum's just sitting by the phone, like they're going to call me any day. They're now. never going to call you, you <laughs> weird dude. <laughs> Why do you want to be Gambit so bad? Uh, I mean, you don't who even look like him. No, he really doesn't. <laughs> can you do the accent? I bet you can't. Uh, the derpiest of derps. Fun idea for '90s kids would be having Jubilee be the front line yeah. of the Academy Disney Plus show. I love the idea of Jubilee. I think she's. I think she works. I also like the idea, though, going back to the other comment of of Kitty Pride mm. being because Kitty Pride was the first Jubilee. Yeah, and I like the idea of Kitty Pride being like. Welcome to the X-Men. Hope you've survived the experience. Like, that'd be kind of fun. It is. To be a show. Uh, but yeah, Jubilee would be great. Jubilee is so, such a fun character, and they never really give her her due. It's true. Th this is also another problem with my pitch and what I hope that you and maybe the chat could help me figure this out. So, so far, act one of this movie is very Scott and Xavier heavy. Right. To the point where I'm like, fuck, am I writing an X-Men movie or am I writing Cyclops, the first X-Men? <laughs> right, which we no one's going to see. I'm sorry. No, absolutely not. It's funny. I was thinking, like, what are movies that get big cast together really quickly? I thought of the Ocean's Eleven movie. I thought of all these heist movies. I also thought of that Beatles movie across the universe that also introduces, like, five characters from different parts of the country and has them all, you know, converge in New York uh, during yeah. this big time in history. And I'm like, yeah, but that's a musical, though. They literally sing their character in what they want <laughs> in three minutes and then they're done. How do we do that in an X-Men movie? How do we get Gene and Beast and Angel and Iceman all here? I uh, think you merge them. I think you merge Giant Size and Original so that... They need to go. You could go. You could do Krakoa, but I think Krakoa might be a little too esoteric. Yeah, it is. Uh, but a little much. I think you do what Ant Man tried to do, and you tie it in with my Hellfire Club. Mm, okay, the Hellfire Club has something that Xavier needs. Right, and they need to they need to pull off a heist, and they need we need to accelerate the plan. The right, plan of yeah, getting my team together. Got to step it up. So he calls together a group of remarkable people uh, who can all do the job like a teleporter. And, 
and Xavier can mind whammy them and talk to them. So that helps a lot. Right. That, that's a, that's a good shortcut. But like you have Cyclops like who volunteered to go and he's like, he's like, where is everybody? And Xavier's like, you're the first one. <laughs> yeah, you're the only one. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just us, dude. And he's like, oh, and then like you see them work and bond and grow and like, you know, uh, maybe Gene too. I don't know how you introduce Gene because Gene's really important and needs she to be really like, isn't. She needs a big moment. And I'm like, well, it, 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 was Gene there already is the thing to right. eat Scott there. I love and that idea. Yeah, is that so? When he opens the door, she's the first one he sees because you gotta sell that moment. The first that's a good one. Of that's Scott a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like she's always one upping him. Like, yeah, I got the message after you, but I was the first here. Exactly. Yeah. No, I beat you, <laughs> and yeah, I always oh, beat you forever um, and ever. It's like I am in love right now. Yeah. Oh my god! All I've wanted is for a woman to tell me what to do. Thank you. <laughs> You're it. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 it. Um. Anyway, so uh, we'll get into that. Dan V900, uh, all they need to do is say that some BS that Magneto's power somehow shoved, slowed his aging, which I think happened in X-Men Black. Just yeah, I think it. they did too. Yeah, probably. The, the magnetic pull of the Earth and... Slowed my blood! Yeah. New type JB Lee, uh, one X-Men member I want to see in the MCU, Dust, a.k.a. Mm. Sunrara, Sunraya Kad Kadir. Kadir. Uh, a better execution of her origin, and I want her intact with Kamala, also brown girl rep. True. She, she would be perfect for X Men Academy. She could be like a POV character for X Men Academy. Hell, she's the Jubilee. Throw away like Jubilee can join some other time, or she's in yeah, there. that's fine too. Like completely updated for 2021, right? Cassandra Cherry Clark. Uh, which X Men friendships do we preserve for Spider Man? Not mm. sure if Holland's Peter would blend too well with Wolverine, but maybe a Nightcrawler. Maybe even ultimate this up with Iceman and Torch. Who would you guys want? Uh, great question. Uh, yeah, can cast a fan? fun Iceman actor to be friends with Spider-Man. Amazing friends, even you could say. <laughs> Dude, I mean, if you could get um, an amazing friends reference, I, I if Dan Slott would just clap and fall out of his chair. <laughs> yeah, and die happy. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I really want to see, like, I really want to see like Daniel Radcliffe as Wolverine. That would be fun and really unexpected. But then again, the Marvel Universe is made on so many unexpected casting choices. All the way back to Robert Downey Jr. Did anyone think he would be the biggest thing? Right? Uh, but I really want to see, like, Wolverine and Spider-Man interacting. Like, I want to see that, like, ew, you're so gross. I don't <laughs> want to be with you. Like, I hate you. Ah, um, come on, kid. Let's go drinking. Let's murder <laughs> people and drink and drink booze. Yes, I, I don't do guys. either of those things. I find you utterly repugnant. <laughs> I'm underage. Ah, I'll put hair on your chest, kid. Drive yeah. fast. You look younger than me. I know. I'm weird, right? <laughs> yeah. I probably get more tail than you. <laughs> dumb tish. Oh Actually, God, hey, oh who, uh, again, as we're talking about, like, uh, who would be good casting? Who? Yeah. Who was that kid from the solo movies, Ansel Elgort? Oh, Anton. No, that. Uh, uh, I don't. You mean you mean Solo? Yeah. So who's the Solo? I could see him actually making a fairly decent Cyclops or Iceman. Oh yeah, a a Alden Enrenreich. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like I made it up. <laughs> sounds like they grew him in a fucking lab. Didn't yeah, he? he's yeah. He'd be fine. I'd be okay with that. Because again, he's not trying to be Harrison Ford. Exactly. Like it seemed like he was slated for big things, but yeah, spent a lot of time just trying to inhabit Harrison Ford. I think he could be a good Cyclops, and he has experience being the leading man of what was supposed to be a franchise, but then didn't become a franchise. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. I could see him in that role. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. Maybe, yeah. Maybe they got to like break in to the Hellfire Clubhouse. It's like, oh, there's this secret society oh. of rich people. Oh, oh, oh. They stole Cerebro. Oh, yes. Boom. Yes. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, Xavier, what happened to your Cerebro? Oh, well, Sebastian Shaw and his guys came. They beat me up, pushed me out of my chair, and stole my Cerebro. Dude, that's why there's no X-Men. I, I called I called Gene. I called Cyclops, and they took my Cerebro. I can't they call took anybody. my shit. That's, that is excellent. That is a beautiful. That's beautiful. So, so they, and, and that also, you don't say, well, you don't talk about Magneto at all. You talk about how, like, ah, oh, they took this, they, they, I need this thing, we need this thing, and, like, he doesn't even admit it was stolen, he's just like, we need this thing, and I'm, you're gonna go in here to get it, and it's like, it, it it's Cerebro, they know that he had, like, they're gonna use it, the Hellfire Club wants to use it, give it to Emma, and yeah, they Emma know they're gonna make a it. fortune with it, yeah. Well, and get more people, and control their minds, and take mm -hmm. their money, and have sex with them, and, uh, 
and at the end, like we see what it is. Like we see it's Cerebro, and they're like, "How did you make that?" Like, I had help. He just winks at you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a story for another time. That's um, great. And we need Cerebro because Scott wants to find his brother, but also we need to find these kids that Nanny and Orphan Maker have dude, kidnapped. So that's like your act two big dude, action scene. He he says, like, it's like the um crap, what it's like freaking Anakin and Palpatine. Yeah. It's like, come with me, I'll help you find your brother. And it's like, oh, but before we can find your brother, I'm going to need this special thing that these guys stole. That's so beautiful and totally the Xavier I want to build this. Kind of an asshole, kind of a shyster. Kind right, of like he's not wrong, but like he's, oh, but like you think you know better than me. Like, yeah. yeah. And let, 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 again, it's the power dynamic. Who's who's the child? Who's the teacher here? You've got us running errands for you already. Right? You know, it's, it's a team building exercise. You see, to get back my stuff that was stolen. Right, right. And it's like, that, that'd be kind of fun, especially with, oh, and we're going to need somebody who like, we're going to need some people. Uh, and we're going to have to do it the old fashioned way because I don't have my special thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's amazing. And also, so the first act is just meeting people. And my psychic powers won't work on the Hellfire Club because Emma's a powerful psychic. She, she's young. She's like a teenager, and she's already almost as powerful as me. Shaw already beat me up once. Yeah, he beat the crap out of me. Um, and I don't. And they'll have Cerebro, so they'll be stronger than me, which also allows them to 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 nerf Xavier, who could like end the conflict in a minute beautiful that's beautiful this is amazing sal we fear and there's our big act too we <laughs> got a break in here all like frat warfare style from these rich d-bags well they're having like an eyes wide shut party and steal cerebro back yes hell they could integrate like they could they could show up and like in in, a, in an equivalent oh my god seeing cyclops dress like his that big stupid X face, like yes, mask, like they for all the masquerade wear, party, like they like for the masquerade party that they have to infiltrate, you know, like Jean meets Emma and they're like ew. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they have a mean girl stand. Oh, this is a great way to work Warren into where it's like, well, fuck, we need a man on the inside. Ah, oh, the Worthingtons, they're rich and weird and everything, and they got a kid. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my god, got to work it. His costume, of course, has a bunch of feathers on it because why would? Of course, it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tuba is the one. We already have most of the young Avengers here. What if they made Prodigy the first mutant in the universe? Uh, <laughs> Prodigy. <laughs> is Prodigy even in any of those new X Men books? Because it feels like everyone is in those books. I have not seen Prodigy yet. Uh, I I don't think so. Maybe he is. I mean, like Prodigy and the original Thunderbird are hanging out together. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Uh, ben Florian, uh, hey guys, I can't stay, but I wanted to say I love you. The, I love the show. I want to say I love you. Uh, I want to say I love <laughs> the love show, but uh, rarely get to catch it live. Hope you uh, both have a great holiday season. You too, Ben. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us. Um, Uzab says, when will a House of X adaptation be a good idea? Ah, uh, like 10, 15 years from now? But they will do it because, again, we're we're building this franchise to last, you see, so yeah, we can eventually. I don't want to see Krakoa. Krakoa is an idea that you have after X-Men's 100 years old. Exactly. Uh, it you only first, works. <laughs> you first says, happy belated Thanksgiving, you guys. Loving the pitches. I think it's a high time we get the X-Men versus Juggernaut. Nice nice one-off villain for an early movie. Mm. I think so. And it also, it, well, it, and it makes the family aspect of it and stuff. Absolutely. Benjamin Laudley uh, says, or loudly says, my pitch open with Cyclops wrecking shit with his optic blast, <laughs> killing Wolverine, almost killing Wolverine over Gene, then leaving the X-Men and the school in ruins to provide Sinister with an opening to uh. recruit Scott. So you've already established the X-Men. And, and it, I'm, I'm, I think it might be a little too short, like, that's like uh, the third movie right there. That's like the high point, like like act two end of the second movie or third seriously. movie. Third movie. Cat Lawyer, uh, they can show government maybe Hydra influenced actively hid mutants Ooh. that can reflect how in real world uh, government do the same thing with certain minorities. That's, yeah, I can that's, see that. That's very MCU. Blame everything on Hydra. Hydra. <laughs> it was always secretly Hydra's fault. Yeah, actually, I like that. Secret Nazis suppressed this oppressed community even more so by keeping them off the books because, you know, it challenged their ideals of gene superiority. Right? Uh, Sean D. Howdy, guys. Hello, Sean. How are Howdy you? Howdy to you, too. Uh, the Milkman. They use stolen Stark tech to make Sentinels. I could see that. I would also be okay with, like... I Here's my idea for that, because like I I I think they want to shut up all the like oh Iron Man Junior stuff. Mm -hmm. I would have Justin. I would have Hammer Industries go under and be acquired by Trask. Oh, that's fun too. Uh, Mike Manhattan, a Gambit heist movie from Steven Soderbergh. 
I mean, that's what they kept. I mean, that's what they kept saying the Channing Tatum movie was going to be that they never made. Exactly. Um, Apropos of the like previous point about um, what was it? Uh, Hydra and stuff. I had this thought just while you were talking about that, where it was like, what if, um, you know, like Iron Man three, he's like all like, Mm. Um, and it's all because of his PTSD and everything like that. Yeah. But but he also gets over it really fast. (laughs) And I'm thinking, like, what if there's this moment where he's like, they retcon in, you know, he stole the shit from from Shield. You know, in Avengers, he steals everything from Shield. Yeah, like, all the information. And then in Avengers Two, he just breaks into the compound and like takes their shit, <laughs> like Hydra shit. It'd be great if he's like, he, you know, he's reading his X Men stuff. He's like, well, there's mutants and crap. And then Professor X is like, no. Yeah, no, gone. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's got to be a thing, too, where Scott says, it's like, how were you never discovered all right. these years? How has this never been a thing? And then he's like, well, I got into your head just fine, didn't I? <laughs> that's all you need. You don't even need to bring Downey Jr. back for, like, a few seconds. You could just say, well, I mean, I got into your head without any trouble. How do you think? Do you think do you think the president, you think you're smarter than the president of the United States? <laughs> and that just keeping a thing, Scott's like, have you deleted my memory since I've been here? You'll never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> K-Pack, uh, quick overview, mutants in MCU, original five X-Men, and giant size on Krakoa, sinister manipulating Krakoa and from shadows experimenting on mutants. Yeah, I can see Krakoa being like an experiment that like Sinister was working on. Everybody wants Sinister and experimentation. I, I think it's too messy. It's because he hasn't been done yet. My thing is like, if you're good, you could have something with Sinister and like the Marauders for the third one. Yeah. Yeah, that's we'll, fair. We'll, we'll work out like like he finds havoc eventually, and oh, he's the leader of the Marauders in this. Right. Oh, I like that. Because Dan's that's back. His only team. Jubilee's gonna skip being a vampire in <laughs> the, skip to being a vampire in Blade. I want Spider Man interacting with Wolverine, and of course Johnny Storm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, Johnny would be great. Scrappy Doo, Deadpool should be qua- should quantum leap into the <laughs> MCU. I love that. If anyone could get away with it, it would be him. Totally. Uh, Mr. Roboto, make the X Men a, a set of musicals, <laughs> then profit. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I, I would pitch a mutant musical. <laughs> mutant right? the musical. Mutants. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alex R. I, a good team to start with: Cyclops, Gene, Iceman, Beast, Angel, Kitty, Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, and Gene. High school rival Emma Frost. It's very X Men Evolution. Also, Storm is too powerful. Again, too powerful. I want to build up to Storm later. Like, again, I feel she could be the leader and linchpin of a whole other trilogy. Absolutely. Mr. Roboto, how about a West Coast X-Men franchise? Oh, uh, we'll, I mean, we'll get there. We'll have X-Factor and X-Force and all the other X's eventually. Totally. Andre F., would you connect Wanda to mutants in the MCU when her children qualify as mutants? Prodigy was in X-Factor, funny enough, dating Wanda's son, Tommy. Oh, holy shit. I, I mean, yes, Absolutely unequivocally yes i thought i want wanda and pietra to have been mutants i want that to have been the thing because like they're the reason they weren't in the comics thanks to like yeah so it, it, it stands to reason we retcon those friggin' movies uh so i'm okay with that we'll we'll get there eventually it will have to be something to be like hey the dad that you mourned for getting exploded in your like russian apartment there turns out wasn't your Fake. dad at all yeah, your dad was actually Magneto. How did that happen? That will probably need a movie unto itself. We'll need to have Scarlet Witch Magneto something to explain that. Here, that's what we want. What will happen? In Doctor Strange 2, they will meet Ian McKellen as Magneto oh, in the fuck. multiverse. And oh, he'll be like, shit. in my reality, Wanda Maximoff is my daughter. Oh, that's Wait, cool. What? How different are we? Weird. And then they don't do that. And then they move on. The derpiest says, uh, would it never happen but Brock Lesnar as Juggernaut? Again, I don't think the dude can act, but he doesn't have to. He just has to be <laughs> big and shouty and sweaty. Kelly Frederick, uh, I think Prodigy was on X Factor, wasn't he? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe for like a minute. Again, that book unfortunately didn't last, even though I like the whole Law and Order meets Mutants. Right. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I think that's, yeah. Do you have any other uh, continuation of this pitch? Uh, well, okay, so so we wrote Act 1. Yes. It's about Scott trying to find Xavier. Act 2, they got to break into the Hellfire Club during a party to steal That's the thing. fun, yes. W- what's our big Act 3 when they got to eventually go liberate all the kidnapped children from Nanny and Orphan Maker? What's what's a cool venue? Where's where's the evil base? Where are they setting this up? Uh, okay, you got to think of, like, evil bases so or, or X-Men bases. It could be... Yeah, what's, like, a very X-Men-y thing? Right, um... 
<laughs> you could make it like a, a tease where um a defunct hammer drone factory oh we have robots yeah because and- danny obviously has drones she has the kidnapped nasty boys who you know she sends into battle because that's the big twist like oh scott now you gotta fight your friggin' childhood bullies and everything because turns out they were mutants too actually everyone in your orphanage was a mutant interesting that you didn't know about that until <laughs> just now right what that'd be a great moment for him um so that yeah but you could have it's it's a it's a defunct hammer or stark drone facility maybe one that like stark shuttered after his revelation in iron man one right um you could have it take place in genosha but uh i don't know what genosha would be i don't want to set that up right away but maybe it's just an island that nanny calls genosha or gets called genosha later on it could be krakoa it could be an island called krakoa yeah, just to put it in there as a reference where it's like, oh, yes, Nanny and Orphan Maker are operating out of a tropical island. You know, how many clicks here there? It's called uh, Krakatoa. Krakatoa. Yeah, Krakatoa. 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 Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. That, that would be a fun, like, that's very MCU to be like, yeah, they go to this island and it's like, that's actually really great. So here's why. They go to Krakoa. Um, like in Giant Size X-Men. Mm-hmm. Um, where they discover that they weren't the first ones to go on this mission. Oh, oh shit. That ex- again, another dark secret of Xavier. Okay, so I might have sent another team here once before because I thought the island was alive, but it didn't really pan out. Right. Clearly, clearly Nanny had the same idea because isn't it interesting that I, Xavier, have the same ideas as all of these other evil characters we've yeah. set up? I'm a little worried about that. I think it makes Professor X too unsympathetic. Right um, off the bat, yeah. Because right yeah, that it's about him trying to build the legend of Professor X and being this, you know, like Willy Wonka ass oh. guy. No, it is. We do it. And then at the end, he makes them forget. Oh, fuck. So now we're going full modern day Hickman X Men. <laughs> yeah. Forget, forget all of it. Right. That's it. We had a fun adventure, didn't we, kids? And we all learned a lot and grew as a team, and you're not all still mad at me. <laughs> Boom. That's it. That's that's a pretty dark twist for an MCU <laughs> feel good movie, but I don't hate right. it. I mean, alternatively, okay, so like that's that's like the real one. Or you could just have them go to the Savage Land and fight dinosaurs. You know what? There you go. <laughs> Nanny's in the Savage Lands. What do you mean? There's I just discovered mutants are real. You mean there's a place where dinosaurs still exist? Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole world out there, kids. It's a big world. You know, there's a there's a dead celestial coming out of the fucking ocean over there. True enough. Yeah, if we eventually get up to there. Uh, I mean, man, I, I was thinking way smaller. I was thinking like creepy ass carnival or something. But yeah, Savage Land, Genosha, Krakoa. Right. Now, I mean, like, if that's the case, you go arcade. Mm, yes, yes. That's totally the sequel villain there. We got to have a whole one built around arcade because never been done yet. Super fucking cool. Endless possibilities. See, the for thing set is, pieces. I love the idea of arcade and I think that'd be a great movie. But these are movie people. They yeah. want to stand themselves up. They made a whole Black Widow movie about Harvey Weinstein. That's They sure did. <laughs> so there's no way they wouldn't do Mojo. Mm, yes, Mojo is great. A big, gross TV executive. Especially with the multiverse. Yeah, I pulled in guys from all over. I pulled in guys from other X Men movies. Exactly. Exactly. No, 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 no. Mojo verse is like the Mojo verse movie is ridiculous. Like Hugh Jack. It's it's basically Mm, just like the what if movie or the what if cartoon. You know, we're just getting everybody together. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh no. No, they fight Wolverine. Like they throw like the team at Wolverine like they don't not Wolverine because he's not on the team but like they throw a Wolverine at them it's the Weapon X one from that Days of Future Past movie or uh, whatever Apocalypse whichever one it was oh that's fun that's really fucking fun so Hugh Jackman wears the friggin helmet (laughs) oh my god and like so he doesn't so it's not Hugh Jackman most of the time and then like they can Marvel de-age him Oh, that's really when they good. break the helmet, and then Mojo's like, "That's enough," and then he just goes away. Do we do we work in an excuse on how he needs to actually put on a costume for the first time ever in this Mojo movie, so people really have to see it because it's the only one where Hugh Jackman wore a costume? I think so. I think that's a great idea. Like the kids are like, "Hey, man, you know, you really helped us on this adventure. We made you something." <laughs> there we go. Oh, Tiffany says he's still on X Factor. Okay, we got okay. that. We got good Prodigy good. worked out. Um, New type JB Lee rocks on would be a 
United Enemy of Mutants and Teen Heroes with Senator mm. Patrick Grayson, uh, Graydon Creed, Robert uh, Kelly, Henry Gyrick. This was inspired by Immortal Hulk oh. and both Ewing and Lore runs the champions. Good, good, good names, good drops for like evil industrialists and aligned oh, yeah. uh, mutant hating racists and bigots. That's that's good. Yeah, you got to pepper them throughout there too and everything to show that they exist because that's endless potential down the line. Exactly. Jam Call X, how many major and minor X villains do you think will get offed in the MCU bad guy blend? because <laughs> x-men is well known for returning baddies that's i agree the problem is that that's why i'm setting up nanny and orphan maker right away you can kill nanny and orphan maker it's fine you don't need to keep any of them around you gotta keep magneto around mr sinister juggernaut, juggernaut. all those other yeah. guys arcade and mojo you can do away with them or keep it open-ended like yeah that was a robot we killed or that was a clone we killed oh simon Pegg is arcade oh my god fuck yes you don't kill arcade you just keep using him like you put over him he, he keeps making death traps for he for heroes like oh what a great opportunity it's, it's endlessly reusable and endlessly wonderful uh, the derpiest of derps keep pitching evil Xavier, not mentioning Onslaught. You can't have Onslaught without it, without Magneto. And we got to set him up. In fact, shit, uh, if Wolverine has his own franchise, should Magneto and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants <laughs> also be a franchise unto itself? I mean, it could be. You could do that. I mean, like, he's a guy who rides the line between good and evil so much. Could you imagine him showing up, giving, like, really impassioned speeches to, like, Blob and Pyre and be like, fuck those people. Those people aren't helping you. I'm helping you. Right, exactly. Oh, yeah. I think oh, there'd yeah. be a huge audience. For if an audience can love Killmonger as much as they do, I think an audience can love the shit out of Magneto. There's no way they wouldn't immediately. Yeah. Magneto was right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Paul S., what are your dream casting choices? Thankfully to you, Jen. So thank you very much, man. Um, it's rough because you got to cast young, and I don't know any young people. That's the thing. I don't want to go uh, down a rabbit hole of casting only because, like, A, that's in a whole episode. But B, you know, for me, I'm, I just pitched the X-Men or the Wolverine movie, and I already told you I want Daniel Radcliffe to be back to be Wolverine. Legit, yeah. Um, but uh, but I love that idea. Um, and I'll, well, you know, one of these days we'll work out our cast list. Maybe we'll just Definitely. we'll just we'll just pull you guys. We'll be like, we're live. Who do we cast? <laughs> yeah, really. But uh, we want to thank you so much for hanging out with us. Joel, is there anything else that you wanted to mention before we uh, sign off? No, that's pretty much it. I th that's I think the movie. We that, we've made the movie. I think we made the movie. That's the movie right there. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. What do you call the damn thing? Uncanny X-Men. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Just full stop. Hey, what's the name you love and like? Or, or you could call it the new X-Men, but that's a little boring. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, especially because like... So for the audience, they're like, what do you mean new X-Men? To me, it is new. I don't even know what the hell that is. It's always new. Then again, I mean, I guess if Spider-Man is any indication, it's the title, then the subtitle. So That's... it should be X-Men, Children of the Atom, X-Men, something, something. Right. Like, because if you know, like, if you know the, um, like, if you, if you know Spider-Man, you don't need it to be called Spider-Man 2 or whatever. Yeah. So... It's always Spider-Man, and I guess X-Men should be like that, too. It's always X-Men, because if you do call it the Uncanny X-Men, does that mean you got to call the sequel the Astonishing X-Men, and then you got to call the next one X-Men Gold, so do you exhaust all the names? At oh, all? I don't like that idea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It would be great for the first one, but then you're really in trouble after that. Yeah. So maybe it should be X Men subtitle, and the X Men have a lot of really good subtitles too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think it's the way to go. Uh, Vicious Soja or Soldier says, "Miss you in CT Con, but finally catch you live." Uh, thank you both for the work you do. Well, thank you very much for being here, man. Thank you very much for the support, and hopefully we'll see you at the next con because there's, you know, cons are back to to whatever extent yeah. that that is. <laughs> But uh, thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for your support. And thank you especially to our super chatters who helped sponsor today's episode. And keep it keep it clean. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you guys next time with an all-new episode. And uh, that's it. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, whether you're Canadian or American, you know, there's nothing. We don't own the patent on overeating <laughs> and hanging out with family uh, out of a feeling of obligation. So. Watching football and parades. Exactly. Don't forget to subscribe. That's the best way to help us out. Uh, so make sure to subscribe here at Comic Pop Returns and YouTube.com slash Comic Pop. Thanks a lot, everybody. And uh, who knows what's going to happen with X-Men? I don't. No. But, no. Uh, but, you know, at least we can give you an idea that you can be disappointed they won't do. <laughs> yeah, true enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so long, everybody. Bye-bye.